Kevin Durant's Nets remain the only team to have been swept in 2022, as the resilient Mavs live to fight another day. Everyone's going to talk about the Warriors regaining momentum after cutting down the 29-point lead to as little as 8 at one point down the stretch, and while the rookies in Kaminga and Moody sparking that run was impressive, as Doncic said post-game, a win's a win. The Slovenians got the most 30-point performances in these playoffs with 9, but more importantly, said post-game that Dallas is playing for more than just their pride, stating he believes his Mavericks can win this series, like he's supposed to say, of course. But fueled by that superstar consistency on and off the court from first-team All-NBA Luka, Dallas only needs their versatile stretch bigs in Maxi Kleba and Dorian Finney-Smith, along with the pure sniping 3 and D guy Reggie Bullock, to continue to produce like they did in Game 4, as those three role players combined for 54 points. If Kleba, Finney-Smith, and Bullock repeat their hot shooting, Dinwiddie and Brunson give you more than 25 combined, and Doncic shoots better than 10 for 26 from the field, that could very well lead to the Mavericks flying to San Francisco and forcing a Game 6 back in the Big D. In today's video, I'm going to predict if that's actually going to happen. Right before that, only 10.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and would mean the world to me, given I'm a full-time YouTuber and a like helps this video spread. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepLowHoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Teams down 0-2 in a series, like the Mavs were against Phoenix, had a brutal record of 31-409, and a 7% winning percentage, yet Dallas still found a way to make history, coming all the way back to ultimately embarrass the 64-win Suns in Game 7. Coach Jason Kidd's defensive adjustments to make Frank Nielakina a rotation player for Game 3, having the low man rotate over earlier to block off the paint, or how Jason had Luka hedge in the pick and roll instead of switch, slowly but surely shifted momentum. But now this Dallas organization faces a whole different animal, as teams who've gone down 0-3, like they did to the Warriors, have gone 0-146, of course a 0% winning percentage. Then again, Luka isn't just any other player or any other star, he's undeniably proving himself as a generationally great talent. But if Dallas is legitimately going to do what no team's ever done throughout the 75-year history of the NBA, it'll of course have to be all hands on deck, and like Doncic is proving he's not just any other star player, the role players will have to prove they're not just there to be carried by Luka. There can't be stagnant stretches like there were in the Game 1 collapse and nearly the Game 4 collapse, this has to be a 48-minute, all-out team effort. And even though the Mavs won Game 4, you can't forget they're facing a Golden State team that was up 3-0 in Denver, up 3-1 in Memphis, and lost both of those outings, which forced another game in the Bay Area. That's the exact same situation as what's currently happening in this Dubs vs. Mavs series. Golden State enjoys closing things out at home. Beating three men who could stack up nine championship rings between them in Curry, Thompson, Green, who are surrounded by a well-rounded cast with guys like Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole, that's tough to do once. Doing it four times in a row? That seems like an impossibility. On the other hand, voting well for the Mavericks is the fact that they have a future Hall of Famer who's looking to carve out a legacy that stacks up with the greatest players of all time. He's only played four seasons in the NBA, but Luka Doncic already has more first-team All-NBA selections than Dwayne Wade, Damian Lillard, Russell Westbrook, John Stockton, Patrick Ewing, Reggie Miller, Dominique Wilkins, Pistol Pete Maravich, Paul George, and Tracy McGrady. Jason Kidd spoke on Luka making his third first-team All-NBA appearance, saying, He's our leader. As he goes, we go, and he loves that stage. Kidd's top player on Tuesday led both teams in points, rebounds, and assists for the third time in his career when facing elimination. According to ESPN Stats and Info, the only player in NBA history with more such games is LeBron, with five of them. But let's go over his full history when facing elimination right quick. At age 21, he tallied 38-9-9 and with Kawhi and PG as his primary defenders. The next year, Luka had 46-7-14 and against Leonard and George again. Now, at age 23, in just year 4 of his NBA career, Luka dropped 33-11-8 and 
against the number one seeded Phoenix Suns, and another performance of 35-10-4 versus Phoenix. And now, against the Warriors' elite defense in Game 4, he put up 30-14-9. He may be in his early 20s, but Doncic is proving he's as tough to eliminate as any player in basketball. But it's going to have to be marksmen like Reggie Bullock, who made an elite 6 of his 10 3-point shots to keep this series alive, who are going to have to stay locked and loaded and properly space the floor. Since his days, not just in New York City as a Nick, but as an LA Clipper, I've always wanted my Raptors to pick up the underrated Bullock, who's capable of giving any team a hefty volume of 3-point shooting, which can help significantly balance the offense and open up driving lanes for a team's shot creators. Brunson, Dinwiddie, and Doncic thrived off Reggie's team third most, 392 three-point field goal attempts during the regular season. In terms of the playoffs, it shocked me when I saw that Reggie had only eight less three-pointers made than Luka. This man Bullock is extremely underrated out on the wing. Meanwhile, ranking second during the 82-game season in three-pointers attempted and made, Dodo was Dallas's most efficient outside shooter, posting the third best mark among power forwards at 39.5% from deep. That incredible consistency from Dorian Finney-Smith has only been built upon in the postseason. Dodo's taking six three-pointers per game in the playoffs and knocking down 43.3% of those shots in 17 playoff outings. But the only Maverick ranking ahead of Finney-Smith in deep-range efficiency during the postseason is Dorian's fellow stretch big, Maxi Kleba. Having both Finney Smith and Kleba is such a luxury because they've both got exceptional length and lateral movement for their size and can also move over to play the small ball five whenever you need them to. Both Maxi and Dorian define the word versatile and it's a shame they're not recognized in the mainstream media like they should be. In my opinion, Maxi Kleba's play could be a determining factor considering how much Golden State is leaving him open, so if he can show up mentally and find his rhythm, I can't stress enough how much that changes things for the four other players on the court, specifically drivers like Luka, Jalen, and Spencer. It'll be a grueling effort, and while I expect this Dallas team to eventually be eliminated, I'm predicting they give their fans one last home game, and quite honestly, who knows what could happen after that. Regardless, no one would have thought that Dallas would have been here a few months ago, so this has been an outstanding season for the Dallas Mavericks. In your opinion, who takes Game 5 in the Bay Area? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to Haunted Hunter, who says, It's hard to pick a most important role player for Boston, because their team identity is pass-heavy team basketball. If I had to say though, probably Time Lord. He's what Boston has been missing for a while. A versatile defender who can grab boards and slam down lobs. He's drastically improved Boston's rebounding. Basketball becomes a whole lot easier when he's almost a guaranteed bucket in the paint. I'm really excited about Pritchard though. Dude's a spark plug. He doesn't get the most minutes, but he makes the most out of them. When he comes into the game, he takes over. His three is deadly and he has pretty good range on it. He takes some gusty shots from a fair bit beyond the arc and makes them. Appreciate every single answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.